But but a lot of what you do and deal with is knives that are thousand dollar plus. Yeah, I would probably say that our average knife that we sell is going to be between twenty five hundred and four thousand. We are here with uh, Matthew Patton. He's a good friend and uh, owns Cut Fine Jewelry. Yes. And Slice Fine Knives. Correct. Tell us how you got into custom knives. Yeah. About four or five years ago, I think it was, I got on Instagram and just started playing around on there. And I've always liked pocket knives, but I never spent any money on them. I wasn't, I wouldn't even buy a $150 Benchmade. It just mm -hmm. wasn't going to happen. And I started playing around on there, and I remember coming across uh, the little mini butchers by ADV. Mm -hmm. And so that was actually my first uh, custom. And then uh, still playing around on Instagram and looking at stuff and uh, started seeing more custom knives pop up. And uh, the match that lit the fuse that uh, ignited the bomb for my knife collecting was actually when I landed my first Grimsman Norseman. And so I picked that up uh, direct from the brothers back in January of last year. And I have been a knife collecting bloodhound ever since. Um, just, just tell us what's going on in the knife making, uh, not knife making, the knife collecting mm -hmm. uh, community right now. Yeah. So, Slice is the knife division or the knife sales division of Cut Fine Jewelers, which is the jewelry store that we have here in Baton Rouge. And so, for us, the way that I collect is the way that I like to retail. Mm -hmm. And um, for me, we focus on some of the what would be considered the higher end customs typically full dress configurations uh, from some of the really popular makers. And so right now, most of the clients that I'm working with, anything with Damascus, Sanmai, Damasteel, uh, Mokutai, Zerkutai, any of those things that have got just that, that wonderful pop of color or there's really uh, eye-catching patterns, that's really what the those collectors for us are chasing. So this is the cream of the crop materials. Correct. This is the, the, the upper echelon. This is not, and, and, and don't get me wrong, he carries some African custom knives as well, yep. but, but a lot of what you do and deal with is knives that are $1,000 plus. Yeah, I would probably say that our average knife that we sell is going to be between $2,500 and $4,000. Who of the African knife makers um, really fits that description? Is there any of them that right now that fit that description? Absolutely. The, uh, the collaboration pieces between... Uh, Andre Thorburn and Andre Van Heerden are extremely popular for us. The biggest issue we actually have is that we cannot get them fast enough. Our clients want the knives from these guys. They are just perfect in every way. The fit and finish is phenomenal. Uh, nobody etches Dama Steel better than Van Heerden and Thorburn. Yeah. Definitely the, the best as far as I'm concerned. Uh, their actions are always perfect. Detents are fantastic. The knives are butter smooth. And so the, the issue is not the selling of them, it's the acquisition so that we can sell them to our clients. So I asked you to bring some knives, mm -hmm. show us what who they are, yeah. tell us about who they are, tell us their story maybe a little bit, yeah. show us a couple knives and, uh, and, and let, us, let us learn about the upper end stuff. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. One of the guys that is probably my most popular piece, both personally and just when I you know, post on Instagram and things like that, is going to be Stan Wilson. Uh, mm -hmm. Pretty much if you're in higher in knife collecting, you know who Stan is. Uh, his most popular model is the non-flipper flipper. And so uh, the unique thing about this one is the mechanism in which the blade actually fires out. And so it's a, it fires by the bolster. I don't know if you can see this on here. And so this one is actually a, a full dress model. And it's got uh, Chad Nichols black hole Damascus blade and bolsters and then Chad Nichols wave pool moku tie. And uh, just a phenomenal knife. Stan's books are five years out. And so uh, this is definitely a hard knife to come across. From a design perspective, I'm seeing some phenomenal knives coming out of Israel. Mm -hmm. uh, two makers in particular are going to be Lee Learman okay. and Nati Amor. So Lee's got Learman Custom Knives. Nati's got Black Snow Customs. Nati's stuff, this is uh, one of his, to my knowledge, one of his highest full dress pieces. Uh, it's one of four that were grind in the Tonto style. It's got Thor Damasteel blade and bolsters, pocket clip, and backspacer. And then this is Chad Nichols Zerkutai on the scales. Um, full hidden hardware. And uh, he just recently released his mini version. And so you can see the two sizes there. This is Nazi standard blade grind right here. And uh, just unbelievably well-made knives, super smooth. Now, how important is it, because I heard you say something, it's like one of four. Or yeah. How important is it for a super high-end knife like the ones you have here for it to be completely unique or mostly unique? I mean, what's, how, what's the importance ratio? 
The uniqueness aspect to me is not as important. I think there's only so many different flavors of ways to make a knife. You know, the materials are available, they are what they are. Now, from knife to knife, the material patterns are going to vary. So even if you configure two knives exactly the same, the patterns are going to lay out different. They're going to be colored a little bit different and things like that. So they're all going to have their own unique signature to them. But one of the things that I wish more makers would actually do is that they would serialize their knives. So it gives each knife its own personality. Right. And so if you buy a knife and then you end up selling it or things like that, you can actually see it change hands because it's got a number on it. And so it, it creates this history behind it. A new one for me... Now, these are your personal knives. This is personal. Okay, we're yeah, we're yeah. going to switch back and forth between that and uh, the inventory. Um, a new favorite of mine, I actually recently discovered this maker uh, late last year. He's been doing it for a while, Robert Carter. But one thing that really sets Robert apart from just about almost every other knife maker out there is that he actually does sole authorship materials. Okay. And so this knife, he, for which example... Which means... He makes... He's forging his own um, titanium Damascus. He's forging his own Damascus steel. And uh, this is one of his pieces right here that's got his sole authorship. Uh, he calls it Rob Mascus. And so this is his sand mine. This is called Rob Tanium. And uh, it's a, I forget how many alloys, but it's a titanium alloy that's got just unbelievable color. I've never seen color out of a knife like this. Same on the pocket clip on this one. Rob's been making knives for a while. I just recently discovered his work and um, I'm just blown away. I'm, begging him to make me another one so we'll, we'll see what happens there we talked about Andre and Andre, so this Andre, is yeah. I got this piece last year and I was blown away when I got it in his just fit and finish we talked about it a little while ago is unbelievable his knives are with the IKBS just butter smooth now tell us how you got connected with Noah on uh, knife photography so Instagram. Noah yeah knife photography just a fellow collector and um, I follow him along with I think the other hundred and six thousand people that do and so I've always admired his style of photography and what he does. And so I reached out to him one day and we just, you know, we chit chat back and forth, a little banter here and there. And then uh, earlier this year, he asked me if I would send him a few of my personal pieces for photography and he ended up putting them on the cover. I was very pleased and honored to have his business. Noah's a great figure in the community, so we love what he does for us. Another guy I want to talk about, pretty much everybody in the that higher end community knows who he is. And the, for the South African guys, uh, this is definitely something y'all should give a follow to because if you want to talk about just a unbelievably talented individual, uh, this is his name's Colin. His Instagram is Rad Knives, mm -hmm. and his most famous model is this one. It's called the Field Cleaver. Just like Robert Carter, Colin has recently started forging his own materials, and he's pushing the envelope there, and he's doing four and five alloy titanium Damascus materials and things like that. So this is a a slightly lower configured model and uh, it's a titanium frame lock nice big steel blade and if you can just see how <laughs> it's just an unbelievably well-made high quality knife for the size for a knife that's this size you would think that it's a little bit clunkier a little bit uh, just not as smooth or refined but it is just as refined as an Andre Van Heerden up-and-coming maker this is somebody y'all want to check out I can't believe how he, he only has I think around 2,000 followers on Instagram some of these guys have 20, 30, 40, I think Colin's up to over 60,000. Mm -hmm. um, this is Dan Brown, he's a Canadian maker, and this is his model called the Hellion, and this is an artist. I want you to handle this knife and just sure, tell yeah. me what you think about it. So, for initial reaction to it is this. I immediately saw the copper uh, uh, backspacer. Great fit and finish, looks like zirconia, tied damas uh, damas steel. Yep, damas steel blade, Timascus uh, scales. Sculpted, sculpted, zirk. Yeah. Hidden uh, hardware too. So my initial reaction is, Wow. Yeah. And so the crazy part is that this was the eighth knife he ever made. Eighth. eighth. No way. That's, that's hell There's number no eight. way. He's made some this... prototypes and things in between, but the ones that he's actually kind of turned loose in the wild that, you know, he's proud to put his signature on and everything, that's hell number eight right there. And then another one I want to point out, um, ever, most people in the United States that collect knives know who Alan Elishowitz is. Yeah. He's been making knives for 30 years this year. And uh, this is a collaboration piece between him and a very hot, talented, um, I don't even want to call him up and coming, he's definitely exceeded that now. His name's Jared Von Otterley. Mm -hmm. I'm going to let you check this guy out. Yeah. And so this is Mike Norris Damascus. It's a titanium liner lock with carbon fiber scales. So initial reaction is, as I pick it up, uh, compared to some of the others I've just picked up, super light. Yeah, and that's there. the titanium. And But you can also, on some of the knives, like, I mean, like this one right here, when you flip it and it's like, you, you have to... Make sure you have a good grip or it'll just, it's so big it'll flip right out your hand. Um, this one right here, 
It's just, it's like butter. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Very, that knife is on washers too, actually. No it's, way. Not, it's not even on barrels. I can see, I can see the copper, the yep. copper washers right there. And, uh, and it feels like it's on bearings. With him, this was actually the first knife I had owned by Alan. Right. And so, uh, super honored to own this one. This is available for sale with Slice. Right. Um, so you can go to Slice Fine Knives on your Instagram, or you have a, 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 a website as well? Just launched a brand new website. Uh, what's today? Friday, we launched it Tuesday. Awesome. And so it's going really well. I've already seen some sales come through, so we're pleased with the way it's turned out. Awesome. Well, follow their follow their Instagram for sure. Mm -hmm. Go to their website. Check out some of these knives. Really thankful for you coming. Yeah, absolutely. And being a, being a, being a part of uh, this this our our, our anniversary party. Right? Yeah. Congratulations on the one year, by the way. Thanks. We're thankful for you coming up. Appreciate you being here. Absolutely. And uh, go check out his stuff. Cut fine jewelry. Slice, Slice fine knives. knives. You don't want me to say your jewelry store too, huh? No, you can. Go ahead. You should buy you should buy jewelry from him <laughs> as well. Uh, but we're, we're thankful for Matthew and being a part of our uh, one-year anniversary. And so uh, that's it. Thank you, guys.